Okay, today we're going to take a look at the cocktail sort challenge. Now, cocktail sort is basically a bubble sort. Um, the only difference is is that cocktail sort runs bidirectional. So, not only does the uh, algorithm search from left to right and sort items in the array that way, but it also goes from right to left. So it's sorting twice for every run that it makes through the loop. Um, and that's pretty much what we're going to show you today. Uh, now, there is a problem with uh, cocktail sort. It's really basically the same uh, time complexity as uh, bubble sort. Um, it may run in half the time, but uh, big O to the n squared power divided by 2 is still big O to the n squared. Um, so again, cocktail sort's very, very inefficient, um, but it, it's kind of cool if you know how bubble sort works, then watching cocktail sort run through its uh, sorting algorithm and uh, sorting the array is kind of cool to watch too, um, which is we're going to see that as we go through it. Now, the cocktail sort uh, algorithm that I built uh, actually um, just basically runs the bubble sort uh, method, um, but it does it twice. Now, I built a little bit something interesting into this cocktail sort, is I'm using a lambda comparator uh, with the spaceship operator uh, to compare A to B. Um, now, I also built uh, two helper methods to run through this cocktail sort. This is mostly just to keep the actual sort method um, more readable and uh, to break apart all of the um, conditionals that were in uh, those two uh, passes. Um, now, as you can see, I take in an array and that array uh, then is uh, sorted in one direction using the forward pass method, um, which takes an array and the comparator that we created. Um, and then uh, it tests whether or not uh, this array is swapped. Um, if it's been swapped, uh, then it uh, passes through the next method and continues to do that through the loop until uh, neither one of these passes uh, creates a swap and then the loop breaks, of course. And then at that point, the array is returned in a sorted order. Okay, so let's take a look at those two helper methods. Again, the first one we're going to take a look at is the forward pass, and that's going from left to right. So the forward pass uh, takes in an array and the comparator. Again, that comparator is just a lambda that we've uh, created to compare A to B. Um, and what it does is it sets up a variable called swapped. Now, if uh, any of those numbers in the array shift from one location to another, that automatically uh, sets swapped to true, um, in which case then it's passed back in and the loop continues. Um, so what I'm doing is I am taking the array and starting at zero, and this is the zero index, I'm going up to the array length minus two. Now the reason we go to minus two is because when I am comparing, I am comparing index i to index i plus one. Now index uh, i plus one um, as the very last number in the array uh, would have to be comparing against i minus two or the length minus two. So uh, I go ahead and set that length up to array.length minus 2. Now this print statement, uh, notice I say I'm going to delete it before the submission. This is actually just going to show us those numbers shifting as we go through the array. Uh, now uh, if uh, on the comparison call um, the array at index i is greater than the array at index i plus 1, then what's going to happen then is array i and array i plus 1 are just going to shift places. Of course, as I said earlier, that makes swapped true, and then we keep going through the loop. Um, so again, swap, if swapped is set to true, uh, then when the return here, which returns an array and the value, the Boolean value for swapped is passed back in, um, it doesn't break but goes into that reverse pass. 
um, which we're going to talk about next. Now reverse pass is basically just the same thing as forward pass. It's just going into reverse order. So instead of uh, from zero up to the array length minus two, it's going array length minus two down to zero. So again, we're just reversing um, the order of the array that we check. Um, again, that same comparator is called, and if I, array i is greater than array i plus one, those two places swap, and that's passed back um, into the original cocktail sort method. All right, um, and that's basically it. Again, we have two bidirectional uh, sorts, uh, a forward pass uh, sorts the numbers from zero to the end of the array at the index. Uh, the reverse pass does the exact opposite, and let's watch this uh, this thing happen. Now, typically when I do sorts, I uh, create a shuffle array that uh, just takes 10 random numbers uh, between negative 100 and positive 100, and this works for that, and I'll actually show you that it works for that, but to actually show you that this, this sort method works and how it works, um, what I've done is I've created a larger array, well it's still 10 items, but I'm creating one of the worst case scenarios. So I'm creating an array with all of the largest items, and in this case the number 10, at the far left of the array, or at the earlier indexes, and the smallest numbers, which here are 0, um, all the way to the right of the array, uh, or the highest index. And we're actually going to see the array uh, look like it's bouncing back and forth between um, the beginning and the end as these numbers are sorted. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens with that right now. So um, let me make sure I'm in the right directory. Okay, and then I'm going to run the file. And before we do that, let's go ahead and make this, uh, this window a little bit bigger so we can actually see everything that's going on here. Okay, so let's scroll back up to the top. Now, remember I said that this array has an O to the N squared time complexity. Um, so it actually has to go through every single location in the array just to see that everything's uh, sorted. So starting with these numbers here, um, remember, we're going to do the forward pass first. So it takes the first number and the second number and compares them. Nothing changes, um, so it passes them to the next one. Takes the second and compares it to the third. Again, nothing changes, um, but when we get to the next pass, it compares the third index to the fourth index, and you'll notice that three is less than four, and so we're going to get a, uh, a gradual increase with this number um, which is 10 here because 10 is greater than every other number in the array. Um, so if we w go ahead and scroll down, you can see this 10 bubble all the way to the right hand side. Okay, now uh, it's past the point and there was a sort, so swapped became true. And what it does then, because swapped is true, the cocktail. Um, sort method doesn't break, it goes on to the next iteration um, or the next uh, conditional um, and it runs that next method reverse pass. So remember we had a, three zeros at this end and that 10 shifted the zeros to the left, all to the left, and so now we're going to start at the right hand side. Um, and so 10 is greater than zero, so no shift. Um, 0 is not greater than 0, so no shift. Um, 0 is not greater than 0, so no shift. Um, but 0 is less than 7, so you're going to start seeing this 0 bubble its way back to the left-hand side of the array. And again, we do the same thing with the next 10, right? Because the 0 shifted those to the left. Um, and then we're going to, uh, again, go to that first method, the forward pass, and we'll see that 10 shift all the way to the right. Now it's not going the complete way because um, 10 is not greater than 10 so it stops at that second to last position. And then we go back the other direction with the zero. Um, so again you see the zero bubble its way to the left and then you see the 10 bubble its way back to the right and the zero here will make its way back to the left. And at this point, all the numbers are in sorted order because that's the way I built the array. So basically I have three zeros, three, four, five, six, seven, and then three tens. Now, 
what you'll notice here is that the uh, loop or the uh, method still has to go through every single position once it's uh, it's completed sorting everything because it has to make sure that once these three zeros are here and these three tens are here that starting from the left hand side again because we're going through the forward pass loop um, we're going to see that nothing shifts so uh, we should go uh, we should do several tests on this so once that zero gets to this position then that's as far as it can go um, and so what happens then is we go back to the forward pass. So we go past 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we have 10 passes in which uh, there are no swaps. And so at that point, the cocktail says, cocktail sort says, hey, look, there have been no swaps. So we're going to break and return the array. And so the assorted array that's returned then is 0, 0, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 10, 10. And so you can, if you scroll really fast, you can kind of see those tens and zeros bouncing back and forth to the left and right, um, which again is what essentially cocktail sort does. Now, as I said, I typically build out my sort methods so that uh, we can actually uh, know that they've, they're going to pass all the tests. So let me get rid of all the extra print statements uh, real fast so we don't have to worry about that. Um, let's comment actually let's go ahead and get rid of that one as well um, this sort or shuffle just showed you that it would run through one full uh, iteration um, in the forward pass uh, just to show you that it actually will run an entire um, full check on every single index um, and you'll notice that oh, I forgot to save it um, that it should do 10 paths uh, checks altogether. Of course, I deleted the print statements uh, right before I did that. So, um, actually, let's go ahead and put those back in just to show you that it does actually go through each of those. Uh, so, we'll comment out the bubbles, uh, uncomment the sorted array just to show you that it does actually do the sorted array. And so, it does one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No uh, numbers were shifted or swapped, um, so it breaks at that point and returns the sorted array. Okay, and finally, the random numbers. Now, this is going to be 10 random numbers from negative uh, 100 to positive 100, just to show you that it deals with negative uh, numbers as well. Um, we've already tested the zero test, so we know zero works. We know positive numbers work. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and test those negative numbers as well. Um, of course, I would forget to save it. Clear screen one more time. Notice all of those negative numbers passed in. Um, so we start with 47, 48, negative 92, 42, negative 67, negative 46, negative 70, 5, 67, and 19. Um, now, several negative numbers in there, so if it's sorted, it deals with negative numbers appropriately. So we'll go down to our sorted array, negative 92, negative 70, negative 67, negative 46, 5, 19, 42, 47, 48, and 67. So we can see it deals with those numbers as well. And, and, but as we note, it's not the most efficient sorting array, um, but does get the job done. All right, if there are one more test, we need to make sure that the actual test, the R spec works. So let's go ahead and comment out. Actually, let's just go ahead and get rid of all this extra uh, stuff in here so we don't have to worry about when we submit. Um, that should do it. And clear my screen one more time. And we'll run the R spec. So again, just the typical uh, R spec command. Um, I did specify in the uh, readme that we can actually run the direct command. We just bundle exec R spec and then it's spec cocktail sort uh, underscore spec dot rb and as you can see it passes all seven tests zero failures and as we saw before it absolutely works again not the most efficient but it definitely works um, if there are any questions comments or concerns please uh, send them in the forum and i will answer them as soon as possible thank you